Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going over a script on quantitative value investing. So in the script, what I'll be doing is grabbing the constituents of an ETF. In this case, I'll be using the SPY. And then I'll screen for certain parameters on valuation and financials. And then I'll hold those stocks and rebalance every month. So for the financial ratios, I scrape these every day from Finviz. And I'll go ahead and show you the table that I use. So if you go to Finviz and then go to Screener, I scrape these tables here. So for the valuation and the financial, I'll be using this table, which contains the PE ratio, the price to book, price to free cash flow, and also the financial table, which contains the debt to equity. So you don't necessarily have to get these from Finviz if you're able to scrape these from another site or if you have this data already. I just wanted to show you where I get the data and what ratios I'll be using in this back test. So if we go to our script, all right, so here are some of the packages we're going to require. And I started scraping this data back in 2018. So I'll be focusing on the end of July, 2018 until present. And so I'll go ahead and create a sequence of dates. Now I wanna get rid of all the weekends and holidays. So I'll be running this following line. And then I'll get the endpoints for each month. So that gives us a total of about 44 months to back test. Now I'm gonna go ahead and read in the files which contains those ratios that I mentioned. But as long as you have those ratios that I mentioned previously, you should be okay. So if we take a look at the valuation table, this is what the table looks like. So we have the ticker and then the ratios and also the date. Same thing for the financials. So the next thing I'll be doing is getting the constituents for the SPY. So I'll go ahead and run this and I'll get the constituents. I'll go ahead and extract the symbols and do a bit of formatting on the tickers. So this following block gets you the data for all these constituents via Yahoo Finance. But since we have a total of about 500 different tickers, I won't be doing that. I'm just gonna read in the data as I have previously downloaded this data. This following block is essentially the same thing, except this calls it from my database. So we won't be needing this. So I'll go ahead and load the data. I'll go ahead and provide this data as well. So in order to read it in, I'm just gonna use load. The next thing I'll be doing is I'll be passing in the tickers and for each of the tickers, I'm gonna subset the data that I need. So this will condense the financial and valuation tables that I currently have to just those tickers. So the next thing I wanted to check is if I am able to get the data for all the tickers. So here the length of tickers we have is 499. The length of tickers in my financial table is also 499 and the length of the tickers in my valuation table is 499. So we're not missing any tickers, so all is well. We should be able to run this without a problem. All right, so for the actual back test, this is the algo. So at the end of each month, I'll look for those stocks that meet this following criteria. One, it has to have the price to book ratio, the latest less than 10. Number two, the price to cash flow per share ratio in the last 12 months must be less than 15 and the PE ratio in the last 12 months should be less than 20. And after I subset those stocks at the end of the month, I'll go ahead and rank these by total debt to equity ratio. So I went along those stocks with the lowest debt to equity, but you could play around with these levels here in the function I created. All we need to pass in are the dates, the levels for each of these ratios, and top is the number of stocks we wanna hold. So I'll go ahead and condense my dates. So this is the function. As I mentioned, we're gonna pass in the dates and for each of the dates, we're gonna perform the following using L apply. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract the rebalancing date or the date we get the ratios and also the next period that we need to rebalance. I'm gonna subset my evaluation table given the date. And in that table, I just want the ticker, the price to book, the price to free cash flow, the PE ratio and the date. And we're gonna go ahead and fill in A's with 100 since here we're just focusing on the lowest and then I'll convert this as a data frame. And here is where I actually filter the data that meets the criteria the user passes in. And if the number of rows in that data is greater than zero, I'm gonna go ahead and add a signal. So we're gonna go ahead and long the stocks that meet the criteria. And then I'll go ahead and get the total debt to equity ratio for each of the tickers, sort it in increasing form. I'm gonna go ahead and add the end date or the next rebalancing period. And if this data has more than six tickers or more tickers than the user enters, then I'm just gonna go ahead and trim the data 
And then afterwards, I'm gonna go ahead and add the return for that given month. So at the end of each month is when we actually take a look at the ratios for the stocks we need to long the following month. And it'll repeat the process until all of the months are exhausted in our date vector. So I'll go ahead and minimize this. So after we get that data frame, I'll go ahead and delete the empty list. I'm going to rbind all the results and return that data frame. So here I'm going to minimize this function and run it. In the next line, I'll go ahead and test the function. So I'm going to pass in the date vector, the levels for each of the ratios, and the number of stocks I want to hold. So I just want to hold a maximum of six stocks for every month. So let's take a look at DF. So these are the results. So for each of the rebalancing period, these are the dates we get the ratios. We would buy the first of the month and hold until the end of the month, the very next month. So here are the ratios, the tickers for each of these rebalancing periods and their debt to equity ratios along with the return. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be extracting the unique cases for the end dates along with the return and create one vector with all the returns. So we can compare that with the ETF returns. So let's go back to our script. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna be passing in the end dates and extracting the returns to make one XCS object. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'm also gonna be extracting the ETF returns and we're gonna go ahead and plot these two to see what the returns look like. So let's take a look at the performance. So the black line is our cumulative return for this strategy, rebalancing every month compared to the ETF, which is the red line. We do have a couple of months with returns of approximately negative 10%, but for the most part, they are all on the positive side. And the cumulative return for the strategy is approximately over 100% compared to the ETF, which is between 60 and 80% during the time period. So overall, not that bad of a performance. And in the long run, it does seem to outperform the ETF itself. So this concludes the video, guys. I hope this was useful information. I'll go ahead and post the script along with the data on my GitHub, and I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description area. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.